friends you may recall we discussed about gravimetric methodology to do the sampling or monitoring of uh, like PM 10 and PM 2.5 using the high volume sampler. We can also do uh, you know sampling and analysis of particulate matter especially uh, PM 10, PM 2.5 even less than PM 2.5 like PM 1 using spectrometer based instruments basically. So, this methodology today we will discuss and this is the last lecture uh, of this particular course. So, first of all uh, we will discuss uh, briefly about the introduction why particulate matter are so important, the national ambient air quality standards of PM 10 and PM 2.5, what is the principle of the method of spectrometer and which kind of equipments are used then how measurements are carried out then uh, you know the software which is used for this purpose. So, how it is used and how does it help in analysis of the data, then the lab based video we will screen and uh, we will conclude. So, as you know this primary air pollutant particulate matter is very important because of its effect on the environment as well as on the health and uh, these fine particles they can go to the respiratory system and they can cause several kind of health issues basically. So, ultra fine particles are also very important like PM uh, 1 and less and they can also be measured, but uh, in this we, uh, in this presentation we will discuss about only PM 10 and PM 2.5, but using spectrometer I repeat that uh, even PM 1 and less than PM 1 uh, uh, can be measured basically. So, this uh, PM 10 and PM 2.5 uh, 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 air quality standards, national ambient air quality standards are there like annual 24 hours. So, for those uh, uh, like industrial residential areas or ecologically sensitive areas values are same like annual concentration of PM 10 is 60 in both cases, 24 hours concentration is 100 in both cases. Similarly, for PM 2.5 annual concentration is 40, so this should not exceed if we go on getting exposed throughout uh, you know uh, year and 60 is the 24 hour maximum concentration it should not violate or it should not exceed at a particular location for PM 2.5. If we talk about this spectrometer based uh, uh, you know instrument, so basically uh, we have used uh, this Grimm uh, instrument which houses many uh, these uh, parts or components like EDM uh, this field housing where instrument can be put in. Then this is the dust monitor which monitor uh, the particulate matter and uh, you can see like. Uh, there is a connecting cable and then there is a filter paper which is small size which is put in into this instrument and data storage uh, uh, you know that memory card is there then this is the battery which is used if there is no uh, current available power available there. Then if we look into dust monitor, so the front panel houses uh, this LCD panel as well as uh, you know this keypad here then this is the slot for data storage uh, that uh, particular card, then sample inlet is there at 4 number where air inflows and uh, analog input uh, 5 number 6 is connecting with the main adapter and then interface port is the 7 number which can be used for connecting with the uh, like desktop computer. Back panel has uh, you know space for this uh, putting filter paper and uh, then there are uh, different uh, you know like uh, for cable and other uh, outlet is also there. So, all these parts are on the back side of the instrument and the basic principle is uh, which is used for this uh, uh, spectrometer they use the light scattering by the single particle. So, each particle that is why this instrument gives not only the mass concentration, but count also. Okay, count means number of the particles. So, count is also available in this particular meet, uh, uh, spectrometer. So, this is the way uh, you know light scattering is there and the light scattering is detected by some method which we can discuss here, detector is there. So, at the 90 uh, degree uh, you know the laser passed, so when it strikes with the particle it, it scatters the light and then through mirror it is reflected and detector detects it and then uh, you know that is monitored or that is stored accordingly the number of particles and then the mass concentration can also be monitored. When we do the monitoring, so basically the filter paper we should particularly be careful about how to put it. So, remove uh, you know using these uh, tweezers uh, the old one and then clean it uh, very properly and then put the new filter paper and uh, you know it has to be weight also okay, 3 times so that because it is small. 
So, the average weight is taken uh, after uh, weighing it for 3 times and then uh, monitoring is to be done. When data is uh, taken into uh, you know the desktop and data as I said it can be like uh, particle per liter count means how many particles are there in per liter or microgram per cubic meter the mass concentration can also be there. So, this is the way uh, you know data is transferred to the laptop or uh, desktop and the software is there, uh, its own software is there which gives us uh, different uh, uh, you know buttons like we can select the port, the time interval, all those things can be set uh, to start the monitoring. So, you can see here the scan ports are selected, then it can automatically take which particular port it is using otherwise manually we can uh, give the name of this particular port uh, and uh, this is the device which can uh, give the display of this particular uh, port related information. Then time interval can be set like from 6 second to 1 hour huge range is there. So, depending upon the necessity we can uh, you know select how much uh, at the what time interval we need data to be stored like 5 minutes each or ten, each 10 minutes or something like that. So, there is one need of synchronize of the device time with the PC time, so that there is no error of uh, the time recording. So, every 3 months they should be basically uh, synchronized, otherwise if site is changing, okay, time zone is changing particularly in time zone, then you can uh, synchronize it more frequently. Okay, then if we uh, took into this user settings, you can see how this is uh, taken all these parameters and headers are there and uh, spreadsheet files are created basically like excel etcetera. So, that data analysis is very easy. Now, this is the button when we start monitoring, so the start device button is uh, to be clicked and then uh, this instrument starts functioning and recording the data. Well, after that when monitoring is complete then stop device button can be uh, pressed and data is stored and then data can be uh, taken whatever time interval we have selected and it can be transferred to the PC. So, this is the way data is collected basically different columns are there and uh, then uh, whether it is count or whether it is uh, mass concentration we can select according to the requirement. Okay. We can analyze the data as per like uh, time interval or uh, you know like particulate matter and uh, mass concentration or count. So, we can analyze and see how data is varying from uh, time to time, right. So, these are the you know software of the spectrometer uh, which we are using. So, control software is there which can give different kind of possibilities and as per the uh, you know the site where we have monitored data is transferred to the uh, particular file and then it is analyzed later on. So, here we present the short video illustrating the sampling and analysis of particulate matter especially PM10 and PM2.5 using spectrometer. So, now you can compare the high volume sampler and a spectrometer, okay. how do they uh, function, what is their difference in the procedures and uh, whether uh, one is robust or second is robust and the possibilities the range like uh, it can also give PM1 etcetera as I said and this video has been recorded in air pollution laboratory of civil engineering department in IIT Roorkee. So, enjoy the video and learn about the PM10 and PM2.5 monitoring using spectrometer. Good afternoon everyone and uh, I welcome you all in this lab based uh, series of uh, this lecture for NPTEL and this is the last lecture in the lab based measurements and uh, today we will be discussing on the uh, sampling analysis of PM10, PM2.5, PM1 using the Grimm model. And for that we will be using this uh, uh, apparatus that is <coughs> the uh, Grimm EDM, EDM 164 that is environmental dust monitor and uh, in that that is it is the field housing and this is the spectrometer and this is the memory guard which is being set in the spectrometer. So, let me just give you a quick uh, intro of this uh, uh, the parts of this uh, field housing and the spectrometer. So, as you can see this is the field housing here we are placing the this is spectrometer right now. Okay. So, this is the spectrometer and this is the front panel of the spectrometer. Here you can see uh, this, this is the LCD screen where we are, we are uh, seeing the readings of all the PM10, PM25 and all the particles and these are the control buttons where we are using this buttons we are controlling the this uh, spectrometer and this is the sam sample inlet. Okay. So, in this sample inlet this sampling pipe is being fitted 
in this spectrometer and this uh, uh, spectrometer is uh, uh, being placed in this field housing okay uh, let me uh, just uh, give you the uh, intro of this back back panel in the back panel you can you can you can see that a uh, uh, lock is there if you open this lock there is a ptf filter okay so this ptf filter uh, this uh, let me tell you this this spectrometer or uh, edm 164 can uh, monitor or uh, sample the pm10 pm2.5 using the two modes that is by the optical particle counter and by the gravimetric okay so optical particle counter can be attained using the spectrometer and also using the gravimetric analysis you can weigh the this ptf filter and you can uh, just uh, analyze or sam uh, sample the pm2.5 sample so after this uh, taking the readings uh, you can weigh uh, this uh, ptf filter uh, before uh, the sampling and after the sampling then you can analyze the pm2.5 particles okay so you can see we are placing the ptf filter using this uh, forcep and it is uh, so placed that all the four points i hope you are able to see this four points this one two three four actually it is placed uh, this ptf filter is placed this side okay so it is so placed like that this four points so this one two three four this four point should be visible okay so after placing this filter filter you have to play close the this panel okay so after this closing the panel and assembling the, this uh, PTF filter, your spectrometer is ready to be placed in the field housing. Okay, let, let me just place this uh, uh, spectrophotometer. And uh, one more thing that this, uh, this uh, spectrophotometer will be uh, attached with the system. And uh, software has been provided, provided uh, for uh, monitoring the particles. And this software is uh, also provided by the GRIM model. And this system and this spectrometer is attached using this RS232 cable. So let me just uh, attach all the things. Okay, so as you can see that uh, the spectrometer is uh, fitted in this field housing and uh, it is connected with this system using this RS232 cable and the field, uh, uh, this sample pipe that is placed in this uh, sample inlet uh, that the port where I have shown earlier. So let me just on the system. So as soon as I, as I on the system, uh, I hope you are able to see that right now. If not, I'll just, let me just tell you, as you on the system, you will be seeing the model name first and then the date and time we are displayed in this LCD screen. Okay, and then thereafter, the uh, available memory, that how much uh, duration you can uh, uh, go for uh, measurement or analysis, that is being displayed. And after that, it will ask you to just, uh, have you changed the filter or not? Okay, so in response, you have to just press this plus button in the spectrometer uh, for a few seconds. So after hearing this beep sound, uh, the spectrometer will go for self-test and the self-test is, uh, is for 30 seconds and after self-test, it will start uh, uh, measuring the particles and it will be showing the count, uh, counts per liter. In this uh, spectrometer, the units are in, it is, it is in counts per liter. Okay, uh, I hope you can see right now. Okay, it is being uh, starting. Okay, I, I have uh, received a signal that like uh, self-test is okay. So after receiving the signal of self-test is okay, uh, you can see that uh, a PM10 and PM2.5, these two particles are being displayed in this uh, spectrometer. Okay. So now spectrometer has is, uh, uh, started. Now we need to configure the spectrometer according to our uh, requirements. And uh, for that, we have to go for configuring the spectrometer using the system. Okay. So this is the... This is the software which is provided by the Grim. 
So let me just give you the hands on how to measure or monitor the PM10, PM2.5, PM1 samples using this software. So this is the software provided by the Grim. As you can see, uh, this is the UI of the software. And uh, uh, here you can see different kinds of options are available. This is the, the first is the control panel, next is the overview. So as soon as I, I connect the software, then uh, it will be showing other options as well. So here you can see you have to first select the ports or you have to scan the ports. So if you know already the port is uh, there, then you can directly or manually select the port. Uh, right now I am uh, clicking on this uh, scan port. Okay, as you can see, uh, it is detected the COM3 uh, port, that is uh, the green port. So uh, the, uh, the port is already selected. So now you have to simply click on this uh, connection to device. So while connecting uh, with this uh, software and the port, you, you will be hearing some uh, sounds from the spectrometer as well. Okay, so I've got the messages, uh, device is connected. So simply you have to click on exit. Now you can see it is searching for some analog sensors and reading the data. It will take a while. Okay, so the uh, port is now selected, it is COM3 and you can see the model and serial number is all the details are there. Next step is to decide the time interval. So as you can see, the time interval is shown is, you have to set the time interval. So the range varies from 6 seconds to 60 minutes or you can say 1 hour. So right now I am selecting 6 seconds and as per the requirements you can select any of the options available. Right now I am selecting 6 seconds and I am clicking on the initialize. Okay, so the time interval has been set. Now I simply click on exit. Now you have to sync the time of this uh, spectrometer or you can say the optical particle counter. You have to sync the time with your PC time. So uh, you can see that uh, you can see the option that is get the current PC time and OPC time that is optical particle counter time. So that will sync the PC time with your optical particle uh, counter time, OPC time. Yeah, I have got the message just time on OPC is synchronized with your PC time. Okay, so the data and time which, which we were seeing in the spectrometer that is now synced with your uh, PC time. Now I am clicking on exit. Now next uh, step is the user setting. So here uh, uh, we are uh, giving the uh, details of the output file. Okay, right now this is test 8. For example, I am uh, just giving the name as test 10. Okay, so you can see all the relevant files. Okay, the mass file, the count files the dm files and the log files all are being set up accordingly and also you can uh, add the details like comments so meanwhile i have just set the normal conditions okay and uh, i have added the username as uh, my name is anurag and also location so right now we are just uh, taking the readings on air pollution lab at iit Roorkee. so i have uh, selected that location i will click on okay now by defining the user setting now you can uh, start the device a message is, is being displayed in the bottom you can see measurement is in progress so yes you can see the measurement is now being started and uh, in this port telegram in in this window you will be able to see as soon as the, the reading has been started so right now it is preparing to start the taking the readings it will take a while that uh, uh, also the next message you can see is the data storage in progress so as soon as it starts taking the reading you will be hearing a sound from the spectrometer and all the other options like control overview distribution table okay now you can see that all the options are now available you can toggle with all the uh, uh, tabs so let me just uh, give you uh, uh, <coughs> idea of all the tabs okay so control tab we already discussed the next tab is the overview tab so in overview tab you can see all the details of your readings okay the so counts uh, like uh, whatever the particles which are less than one micrometer whatever the particles which are greater than one one micrometer and the total count of the particles total uh, suspended particles pm10 pm2.5 pm1 and other uh, particles like uh, it is classified as inhalable thoracic and alveolic okay so all the all the particles uh, soft uh, like uh, the details of the particles are shown here as an overview in this particular tab okay so coming to the next tab that is distribution in distribution tab you can see uh, a log uh, table is being shown okay so uh, in this first table that is uh, the log table you can see the uh, in x axis you can see the particle diameter or particle sizes and in y axis you can see the uh, this uh, microgram per meter is the mass distribution and in this you can see the area divided by the this uh, volume of the air being sucked by this sample pipe and in first step you will be able to see the counts per liter okay so uh, this log graph is being shown in distribution tab in the next step 
the next step you can see the live reading you can be able to observe that it every six seconds that is the what interval we have uh, decided it every six seconds it is uh, uh, showing the readings of all the particles and uh, uh, in the first step you can see the counts per liter in the next step you can you will be able to see the pm 10 pm 2.5 pm 1 and other particles that is the indoor air quality you can say so in this year you will be able to see uh, in microgram per meter cube the unit and coming to the next one this is uh, now this is the graphical presentation of <laughs> we were uh, seeing earlier that is in tabular form and this is the graphical form okay so that is count per unit of mass is being seen on and this one is uh, uh, particulate matter and next one is iaq so in particulate matter this pm 10 pm 2.5 pm 1 are being shown in this uh, indoor air quality this inhalable thoracic and alveolic so these are related to the this particles related to the uh, size uh, uh, ranging from according to this uh, organs present in the lungs so <clears throat> according to this size of which whichever be the sizes like in alveolic part uh, there is some size size ranges and according to that this uh, <coughs> measurement is being done okay so that particular uh, uh, part is called as alveolic okay in in next step that is the statistics okay you can see uh, the values uh, which uh, we are measuring and then all the again the units are there your discount per liter and microgram per meter cube okay so you can calculate the stats using this uh, uh, particular uh, tab and also you can plot the graph now uh, this uh, showing the stats of this uh, particular measurement so box plot or visca plot you can say and at 5 uh, percent in, uh, confidence interval and 95 percent confidence interval they are being plotted so you can see the pm 10 pm 2.5 pm 1 are being plotted so in this whisker plot you can see the uh, this lower part is the lowest range the bottom part and this particular line shows the uppermost range and this box this box shows the interval confidence interval of 5% and 95% that is being shown and that this line shows the median median of the readings and the values you can observe in this particular window so after this what we are going to do, you can also save all the graphics or uh, all the graph right now at any particular stand. So uh, this is all uh, about the uh, this uh, live monitoring or real time monitoring. So now you have to save the data. So for saving the data, you have to first stop the device. Okay. So after stopping the device, uh, what we have saved that uh, I think hope you will be remembering that uh, we have saved by using the name test one zero that is being saved. So the question ar arises from this, like uh, for going for a field condition, we, we cannot uh, take our system and uh, for example, if you want to monitor the particles for eight hours or 24 hours or maybe any of the requirements. So in that case, what we are doing, we are simply connecting the device and initial initializing uh, it uh, using the software. Okay. So after initial in initializing the software, starting the device, we can disconnect uh, the cable okay the, uh, the device will still be working and the data will be sh stored in the memory card so uh, our sampling time is completed for example we are taking the reading for eight hours so after in in starting the device and after completion you can simply uh, turn off the spectrometer using this on off button that is already in the in the spectrometer so using that button you can simply off the device and now to extract what data has been saved you can simply click on the external memory so it will ask that, that whether the data has been saved in sd card or uh, that uh, card that is known as sram card or pcm ci card so right now i am clicking on sram card so uh, again that particular com port is being selected now you have to go for read memory card after clicking on uh, read memory card it will read the card data it will take a while and uh, the data will be downloaded one more information about this is that if you are going for fresh reading i would recommend that uh, clear the memory card uh, for going for fresh reading so that uh, the previous reading should not be altered okay you can see memory card is being down downloaded so after uh, this uh, data has been downloaded that data can be uh, converted into spreadsheet format using these options so after, as soon as i click the on data uh, convert to spreadsheet format this particular window opens and you can uh, see the whichever data we can we have uh, recorded right now 
that uh, uh, you can select the data using this uh, toggle keys that is present here so right now i am selecting the fourth one okay uh, and uh, you have to just uh, give a name so again i am giving the name as 10 underscore 1 now i will click on the start conversion data is being is already been converted okay so let's just assume that uh, you have converted the data and you have uh, obtained uh, the eight hours of reading in in particular spreadsheet format so also you can import that particular spreadsheet in this software also so for that we can go for open files and open files you can see uh, right now it is by, by default taking the file which i have already saved okay you also you can select uh, or browse uh, at particular locations okay so right now i'm again selecting that file uh, just for information and you can click on the uh, open files with the software and and you can click on exit so you can see now that all the readings which you have taken uh, that is present here so this is uh, the procedure by which uh, you can measure uh, the pm10 pm2.5 pm1 using this gray model so this is software all about the software thank you so you have seen and you know how to use the spectrometer so this is a versatile instrument which can give you count as well as mass concentration of particulate matter pm2.5 pm1 you know pm10 huge range is there as i said and all these data are very important because whenever we want to do source apportionment or uh, identification of different sources where they are coming from and if you want to relate uh, different kind of uh, concentrations of pm1 or pm2.5 etc then we need these kind of data okay and also to compare whether uh, you know it is violating uh, the standards or not so monitoring is very much needed so this is all and this is the last lecture uh, of this particular course these are the references which we have used for this particular uh, lecture so i take this opportunity to thank all of you who took so keen interest in this particular course we enjoyed your interaction uh, through emails etc and i thank uh, e learning center of iit rurki especially vinoy to schedule uh, lecture recording times as per our uh, you know convenience and i also thank th anurag and uh, gaurav and other students like riya and uh, apshay and rahul they have also contributed a lot in this particular course so thanks all and i wish you all the best for your pursuits uh, regarding air pollution uh, uh, control and air pollution studies whether you are uh, as studying as a student or whether you are trying to implement this knowledge in the field so uh, all the best for your pursuits and thanks again